Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So this is a U.S. broker deal, but it is separate from the Abraham Accords. I just want to make sure that's correct. Why is this happening now? Well, it is technically separated from the uh, Abraham Accords, but it is part of the uh, U.S. policy under the Trump administration of the uh, efforts uh, to try and widen the cycle of uh, countries that normalize their relations uh, with uh, Israel. And uh, now that the uh, Trump administration is no uh, longer in uh, power, uh, I think Kosovo wanted to make sure that this uh, normalization with Israel, Kosovo being a uh, mostly Muslim country, uh, would have this normalization with Israel, which also entails Israel recognizing uh, Kosovo, something that Israel has refused to do for many years. Right. So Kosovo's independence will be recognized by Israel as part of the deal. And what does Israel get? So as far as Israel is concerned, uh, first of all, uh, it was under pressure from the uh, Trump administration to change its policy uh, on Kosovo. For many years, Israel did not recognize Kosovo for two main reasons. First of all, uh, it did not want to set a precedent that might apply to the Palestinian Authority, saying that if Kosovo could secede uh, from Serbia and be recognized, then the Palestinian Authority might follow suit. And so Israel did not want to set this precedent. Also, Israel uh, did not want to cross uh, the uh, Russia, because Russia opposes the uh, recognition of Kosovo and Israel needs its cooperation with Russia over Serbia. So basically it was pressure from the Trump administration uh, to uh, show a um, an achievement in foreign policy. And in terms of uh, what Israel gets in return is, of course, this promise from, the, uh, from Kosovo to open its embassy uh, in Jerusalem. Okay, so speaking of that embassy, this will be the first Muslim-majority country to open an embassy in Jerusalem. How significant is that? Well, it is very significant because so far all Muslim countries have refused to uh, to do so. And if we have had so far some countries opening their embassies in Jerusalem, especially, of course, the United States, but also a couple of countries from Latin America, none of those countries, of course, are Muslim or Muslim majority countries. And so that would uh, that is definitely a precedent that might encourage uh, other countries, other Muslim countries that have relations with Israel now. Uh, to follow suit, even though I don't expect this to happen very soon, but it is definitely a welcome precedent and it is unprecedented. Do you foresee more countries normalizing ties with Israel and maybe even opening embassies in Jerusalem during the Biden era? Well, hopefully the uh, Biden administration will continue those uh, efforts. Uh, whether or not it will have the same leverage uh, on those countries is an open question. I think the next countries in line to uh, who are candidates, so to speak, to normalize their relation with Israel, mostly Indonesia, uh, the largest uh, Muslim country uh, in the world. Uh, there were talks under the in the last days of the Trump administration of uh, Indonesia also normalizing with Israel. Uh, I think this should definitely be something uh, the Biden administration would want to wear, work on. Uh, it would be an important uh, development in Israel's uh, position and foreign relations in Southeast Asia. All right, Dr. Navon, thank you so much for your insight.